One of the ways to speed up a changeover is to split some of the work out. Let's talk about inside work versus outside work. Hello, I'm Tom. Welcome to my channel where we talk about continuous improvement in an industrial setting. And today we'll be talking about inside work and outside work. And this does not mean, you know, stuff you do in the house or stuff you do out in the garden. This is about a concept in changeovers or SMED, you know, single minute exchange of dye, where we look at the work and we're not gonna try to make the whole thing more efficient or remove whole parts of the work. We're gonna specifically look at what can we prep in advance. So how can we make sure that we take some of the work that is now inside of our change over time, pull it out, and then have it outside of the change over time, thereby making the change over itself much faster. Now we will still be doing that work. There are other techniques that might allow us to also really reduce the amount of work, but this technique is a very powerful one that will allow you to affect the machine time and the, the, the downtime, which can in many circumstances, many industries or even service-based things, as we will see, really affect the custom experience, the throughput of the machine, maybe even the quality of the product. So what do we mean? Let's say that we have something like a cleaning routine and there's a whole bunch of steps that are needed to do this entire cleaning process. So it's a, a bit of decoupling of the machine and then washing stuff and then you decouple other things and then you, you also clean those and at some point you start building it all up again. And when we analyze all of that work, we see that all of those steps, you know, they, they all have to wait for the previous one to, to end. I know this is a simplified thing. You can also sometimes do two or three things at the same time while something is still rinsing. You can go to another part, but this is more about we identify which of these points might also be done already before. So maybe you have a number of you know, tools, um, buckets, pieces of piping that are already not used during the last program of the line. You can take them out, you can already rinse them. Maybe you can prepare your cleaning solutions. Maybe you can already have a new set waiting to go into the machine so that you can do the actual deep cleaning of a number of parts after the cleaning. And what you will do is you say, okay, which parts really need to be done during the cleaning? There is just, you know, no way to do it with a running line. There is no way to replace it. Those, they will stay in. But the other parts, so in here I identified them with red, we say, well, there are actually options to move them out. So what we do, is we move them to different sides of the process. Let's say that we have this uh, one set of pipings that can already be taken out because it's only used during the loading part of the process. So, I mean, a half hour or so, or maybe even longer before we run out the program, the, the whole manufacturing program is running for a couple of hours, we can already safely take it out. So let's just take that one out and already clean it. Now there's a, a number of special tools that need to be cleaned, uh, but they also need specific cleaning solutions. The easiest way to make that is during the cleaning, but if we invest maybe in some thermal containers, a little bit of heating, we can keep those solutions nice and hot, or we, we make a, a sort of a small automatic mixer that can come in, but we do need to prep it. We, we need to put all of the agents already in there, so we prep it before. It takes even a little bit longer than it would have taken during the cleaning itself, but we take it out of the critical path. And then there is this uh, mixing part that really always gets very dirty and it takes a, a good time to really scrub it. What we did is we got a identical replacement mixer that will just be put in. Then after we start up the line, we take at some leisurely pace later when the new manufacturing cycle is already running, we take and clean that for the next run. So you see, the work did go somewhere, but we went from a pretty long 
changeover with cleaning to a nice and snappy changeover. We sort of halved the changeover time. Our line is back up and running much more quickly. Now to organize this, we will need maybe to put a couple extra people in place so that there might be somebody then in your factory who is just there for these type of cleaning. So that they will go a bit from line to line and help with all of those outside cleaning tasks. Uh, it might be that we need to invest. Right? We've got the extra mixer, also it's a small investment. We've got this specific cleaning mix card. That is an investment. So you will have to make usually a couple of investments. The most important thing is that you really look at what would be possible to prep in advance so that the actual contact moment is as short as possible. A very nice example of this is uh, what you see quite often now in Korean restaurants where they will not uh, just bring the plates to your table and hand them out, put them on the table, but they actually sort of bring the entire table. It's like a table cover, a wooden table cover that is a, a completely new table surface that is already fully prepped, completely decked out in the kitchen. You just roll it up to your table and slide it across. Isn't that wonderful? So you know that there is basically the same time to put it all on there. Although it might even be faster because they can do it in an area where you have some more space. You don't need to really watch for the customers, but that is not the most important part. For the customer experience, they get this wow quick changeover. They have a nice clean table, they're just enjoying themselves. And then in one go, everyone has their food. And also when cleaning away the table, they just take that whole on top table tray and roll it away again. These things, they are just sort of game changers in the restaurant business. They are not for every restaurant, but there where you just want that quick change, it is ideal, right? If you are in sort of fast food, medium fast food, or just want to have these wonderful quick things. This is a, a dining experience for many people. So it can even be very nice. Right? If you go to a French restaurant and it's very posh, you don't really expect this to happen. You expect you know, a couple people with nice white gloves to serve all the plates and uh, do all the things like the serving from the left, the taking from the right, and all these nice fancy things. But in many restaurants, you would be amazed if they just roll out a table towards you. So that is a big time saver and it can even be nicer. But the thing here is, when we do this in business, it is also about keeping that line running. <clears throat> can you imagine that if this cleaning, we could even make it shorter and we would go from an hour cleaning to something like a five minute changeover or something like that, right? Where most of the line, because this is the big problem, most of that line doesn't need that same time. Now, if it is just stopping the line and then continuing again, it's doubtful that you will really get your time back. But many, many lines will have a product that is you know, changing and, and there is huge setup costs. So if you are, for instance, smelting steel, you don't want to stop the smelting process because down the line somebody needs to change the, the crusher wheels or the, they need to change the cutters. It needs to continue because if you stop that down the line process and the smelting kiln is just you know, waiting and it's over boiling and that's a mess. The same happens with uh, when you've got paper fiber that is in suspension and, and being dragged into shapes. If you stop down the line and it really creates a stop at this forming and drying station, you can throw away all of the production you made from that stop. If you are in the food industry, you see this a lot. Cheese will continue to ripen sort of in uh, the, the cheese vats. So any stop down the line immediately kills your efficiency. Uh, imagine bread being still in the oven when something somewhere else is clean. So many of those lines to do even a half hour cleaning or a changeover of the, the dyes that you need to make a different shape you will need to empty the line from the front to the back, completely empty that line. Then when you did the change, you have to start it up again. So what could have been a half hour or an hour job will actually become a four hour job because there's this big run off, run in of the whole line. That is why you do this single minute exchange of dye. If you can manage to keep it under that critical time, say that such a machine, this kiln or 
uh, or even the bread, it can easily wait for about 10 minutes. Then you can sort of do a running cleaning, a running changeover. That is where the real money is. And one very nice example that uh, we can see in industries, it comes from cable industry. So we have these copper wires. They go through a plastic color nozzle and they get this, this insulation plastic around it. So they go through the nozzle, the nozzle puts some nice red colored plastic uh, around it and we've got a red insulated wire. At some point, of course, we would like to also have some green wire. So what they do is they cut it all off. Generally, I mean, I even drew it like it would just stop doing the red, then we stop the line, we exchange this thing, put it on. But honestly, in practice, they usually just also have to completely cut it and feed it through the whole line. Do remember, these wires, they, they generally don't even come from a spool, but they are still formed in the line. And then the last part is this uh, making a nice insulation around it. So we're actually putting quite a bit of wire that is no longer stretched, no longer formed. We're losing all of that. We're losing a lot of time to wire it through the process again. And then we change it, we put a green color in and we start again. That was the old process. The newer process is they just put two nozzles on there and all the wires, they flow through two nozzles, but they can control the diameter. So uh, with that, they can control how much of this insulation plastic is put onto that wire. Now, when we're making red wire, they just fully open that up and leave it empty, right? So they, they just have a blank, nothing there, secondary nozzle. And the red wire goes through and just passes through this one. Then when we're about to change to the green one, we sort of stop feeding the red uh, buffer here so that the, the plastic, it, it runs out a little bit. But before that really happens, we fill up the green one and then we make the red one smaller. We open up the green dosing and it will create a little bit of red insulation in the middle, but nobody's going to see it because we put the green on top all around. So the green actually closes it out. And for all intents and purposes, we're getting a green insulated wire out there. The red one is still sort of flushing out what is left. So we can sort of even clean it at the same time. And then when the red buffer is completely empty, we just take that off, do the cleaning, and the green one will continue to do all the work. And then at some point, again, we want to change colors. So we put that first nozzle back on, uh, we fill up its buffer with whatever color we want, maybe back to red, and we let the green one uh, run out of color as well. So we make whatever color the first one gives a little bit and then more and more and more when this one runs out, but it will create this nice green color on top for a long time until this plastic is almost out. Then we stop it, take it away, and immediately the cable turns back to red. Wonderful, right? So an investment in an extra nozzle, an investment in the control programming that steers this changing of the nozzles and the diameters and the application of how much plastic we put on there for the insulation. Yes, that is an investment, but you make that investment, you know, once per line, and then you have a way better system that uh, will save you some cable. A uh, copper isn't cheap, but the main thing is it will save you so much machine time. You can just continue to produce and you've made something that might take 20 minutes, 40 minutes to really spool that copper wire through your machine again in a good way, get also a stable startup because these type of machines, they generally, the first so many meters that pass through, they're also a bit iffy, so they have become defects. You take all of that away by having this double system and you can just make whatever color you like. This will give you one huge added benefit and that is if some customer now asks for a bit of purple wire, you know, give me four spools of purple wire. That would be a nonsense order here. We would say, oh, that order is so cost prohibitive. We're not gonna do a changeover of a half hour to then do you know, five minutes of production to get those four reels out. But if you have this system anyway, fill it into that first one, you make it enough, you stop it again, and you, know, you just continue on, the, on your main product, the red one. So you make your factory a lot more flexible and you can get those tail orders in that because the rest of the industry cannot yet do this, will give you the higher prices, not as prohibitively high as you would have had here, but still higher. I mean, it is a specialty product. 
without much of the extra cost, which means you get a lot more profit. You don't stop the line as much, you have way fewer losses. This is what SMAT single minute exchange of dye, and here we definitely have dye as in the color. Uh, here we sort of have dye as in the form, what we also had here, right? We, we put in quickly a new mixer, a new dye cutter, but a new mixer, single minute, even quicker in that case maybe, and continue to run the line and take care of everything that was needed before and after outside of the critical work path. So think about your changeovers, your routine types of stops. Look at all of the tasks that are now inside that work and become creative. How could we move this outside of the critical path? It may even take a bit longer. It may require some investment. It may require very creative thought. But at first you brainstorm, right? Just think of possible options, go to other industries, check things out, get the ideas flowing. Then you can chat with your engineers and they will tell you what is not possible. But think about how you might be able to get things out and what if you could reduce it by half or even better, what, where is your critical time? Right, so if you could do the full changeover of your biologically active line, right? So, something like bread and cheese and uh, beer and things like that, that, that are alive, right? When you are making them. If you could do a change within six minutes, would that mean that you don't have to clean out the tanks? Maybe if your process it is about 30 minutes is still okay. But that will give you this huge step change in efficiency if you can get it under. So you're going to check what is really, really needed and which of these investments, crazy though they may sound, to save five minutes, with that picture in mind, are going to be worth it for your industry. So if this triggered any thoughts how you can improve your company, don't forget to hit that like button. And also, this actually came again from a viewer question on it. Please explain a bit more on changeovers, different changeover improvement methods. So don't forget to drop comments asking about you know, what topics would you like me to discuss or what questions did this video or different videos raise. For now, I wish you the best of luck improving the efficiency of your changeovers. And as always, don't forget to also enjoy the continuous improvement journey.